My third and last video for today, I'm back in the chronological survey now. I'm, I'm, I'm drawing from the Torah. Now I've, I'm finished with Genesis. I've gone on to Exodus. These are the Moses stories. And I talked about Moses and the bulrushes, uh, told a story briefly. Then I had you guys look at Willow. Look at the way the movie Willow opens. Uh, uh, before I go on with that, let me tell you a little bit more about Willow. Uh, the kids almost always want to see more. Let us see some more of that. Let us see some more of that. And I tell them, well, maybe later in the year if there's time. Sometimes I'll go back. But in fact, uh, actually by the end of Willow, I... I, I think I, I think it, it loses some of its wonder toward the end. Uh, I, I'm not I'm I'm not sure kids would love it the whole way through, but they love the beginning of it. But it is very useful to study in terms in the kind of terms that I use. Uh, archetypes. Uh, it's loaded with archetypes. Uh, we find out that Willow has got some acorns. There is the hero's special weapon. Uh, Willow is an unwilling hero. There's a character in there later on. I'll tell you about him. He's uh, he's the rogue hero, Mad Morgan. Uh, there are light motifs. Uh, Willow can't stand trolls. That's a light motif that comes that's associated with him. Uh, epic themes. Uh, the summoning of a council comes almost right away. A quest. Uh, they go on a quest. Um, uh, literary devices. Comic relief is, is so effectively used. There's an echo uh, right at the end of Willow. I, I don't intend to take the time to, to analyze that movie and study it. But it is available, and it would be a worthy thing to spend a week at, I think, uh, in a classroom. All right, now back to Exodus. Uh, after Moses uh, uh, is grown up, uh, I call this story Mo uh, the outlaw Moses, which is not usually the way people would think of it. Moses is an outlaw. But I like to call him that because Moses, I'll ask the students, what was it that he did that uh, he, had, he had to leave because of it? Uh, and the answer was he killed a man. Uh, he killed a, um, uh, a, 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 a man who was beating a slave, and by now uh, Moses knew that he was a Hebrew. But why, uh, and so he had to flee, uh, and he lived in another land for a while. Uh, and it was there that, that he finds out that he's going to have to be a leader. Uh, let me go on just a little bit more with that, and then I'll, I'll tell you about the business of calling him an outlaw. Uh, while uh, Moses is there, um, that's where the story of the burning bush comes in. God speaks to him in the form of a burning bush. Uh, uh, I, I like to ask the kids, what was it about Moses that made him think that he wasn't the right guy to be a leader? He had a, he had a, a, a handicap. What was it? And some kids know. Uh, he, he wasn't good at speaking. It's not clear if he stuttered or what it was, but he wasn't good at speaking. But he was told, yes, he was the one. And so he ends up uh, coming back now as a leader to be feared, really, uh, at least contended with uh, on the part of the Egyptians. Well, now why I call him an outlaw Moses is because I see here Moses as an archetype. And in this fourth section of your notes, maybe page 4.2 or 4.3, uh, skip a line. It's always a good idea to skip a line in these lists because we may have other good examples. Uh, but anyway, um, the good outlaw. By the, this is a, a, an archetype is a kind of character that keeps showing up, and uh, uh, the, typically the good outlaw is a perfectly good man. It's the law that's bad, and so this good man has to be an outlaw. Uh, I don't mean Jesse James. Sometimes kids will say, oh, I like Jesse James. Well, Jesse James was very good at being an outlaw, but I don't think he has that archetype of, of being a good man and the law is bad. But Moses is the oldest example I know of this. King David, very shortly, probably before the week's over, I'm going to be talking about the stories about David. And uh, David, before he's king, he has to run from the law. Uh, uh, not through his own fault. The law is bad. Uh, King Saul is losing his mind. I'll come back to that. Robin Hood. The kids think of Robin Hood immediately. Right away they think of Robin Hood. Uh, 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 good. You know, the law, and who's the bad law? The Sheriff of Nottingham, uh, Prince John. Why well, I paused there a little bit was I was thinking in Swiss uh, literature, William Tell. I think William Tell would probably be an example of a good outlaw. Uh, uh, there, there are lots of them. I knew stories of uh, one in, in Brazil when I was living there, here in Bedford County. Um, there are stories about an outlaw who was a good man. Um, uh, the Dukes of Hazard is a television show, and the kids, 
a lot, the kids still like the Dukes of Hazard, and these boys, you have the feeling these are good boys, they're good boys, they're a little mischievous, but they're good boys, but they're always running from the law, and the law is bad, I'll ask the kids, who's the law, and they'll, they'll usually know, Boss Hogg and P. Coltrane, what is it, something, <laughs> I can't believe I can't think of it, but then see, <laughs> If I were teaching this class to a live audience and my students were there, they'd be coming up with other examples. And I'm sure they'd come up with lots of them. They're really good examples of this in modern uh, movies. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I, I, I don't want to uh, just go on with my own list. It would be better if you could think of some and write some down yourself. Or better yet, comment. I, I still haven't been getting very many comments. I'd love a comment. Somebody say, hey, I, I can think of a really good example of a good outlaw. All right, this is going to continue to be a little bit ragged until I'm done talking about uh, my experience last week with those elementary kids. But uh, it'll, it'll smooth out as the week goes on. I hope you're back for tomorrow.